My name is Anurag Saluja at AWS, and I will be your host and moderator for today's webinar. In today's session, you will hear from our partner, Sense and one of their customers, Zalora. They will share how they optimize important e-commerce journeys to build a winning strategy for their brand. Let's welcome Luciana Amaral, Fashion Industry Lead at vSense, and Liam Hutchinson, Group Director of Product at Zalora. Hello there, happy to be here with Lian. I'm Lou. Uh, and as mentioned, vSense is an AI and discovery company. We help to make product discovery easy for shoppers, therefore improving customer experience and revenue for leading brands and retailers around the globe. And with me here, uh, Leon, he is the director of product uh, in Zalora. And you probably know about Zalora, of course. Zalora is the Asia's leading online fashion, beauty, and lifestyle destination. It is also part of the global fashion group. Zalora is also known as a truly customer-centric and innovative company. And we are really, really proud to have Zalora as our customer and long-term partner. So. Uh, as we already know, 2023 is presenting challenges regarding the global economic crisis and ever-changing customer behavior shifts. Inflation will put a pressure on price and customers will think twice before they open their wallets, it's for sure. And on the other hand, we have increasing demand for convenience, better customer experience, curation, and of course, personalization, right? Uh, therefore, we'll, we know that we will have to work harder to improve customer retention and secure revenue in this challenge uh, uh, of 2023. So considering this scenario, Leanne, what are your um, Zalora's actually top priorities for 2023? Just share some. Thanks for the intro, Lou, and great to be with you today. Thanks for having me. Um, certainly when it comes down to our consumer experience for Zalora, um, there are three big objectives for us. The first one is, is really doubling down on customer loyalty. Um, it's increasingly more difficult to attract new customers. And so you really have to also make sure you're treating those long and returning customers as well as they possibly can be. And customer loyalty is really, and I'll explain a little bit of this throughout our discussion today, um, is really where personalization fits for us as well. Uh, because we just see that those returning long-term customers that we have, they have a higher expectation around recognition, us remembering who they are, their preferences they have, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, the second big priority for us is really around retail excellence. How do we create the most competitive assortment, the right price points, the right promotions? Is there a need to segment some of those promotions, et cetera? And how do we then automate the whole creation and, uh, and setup of these campaigns, I think, you know, in Southeast Asia, especially, there's a huge competitive market there with, you know, lots of campaigns running, lots of price changes, et cetera. So how do we build out for that? And then the third piece is Zalora is a fashion expert. We're, we're predominantly a fashion player. We work in some peripheral categories as well, like beauty and sports and lifestyle. Um, but how do we really improve our fashionability as a company? And how do we really double down on that fashion experience and create one that is, um, is very unique to us where maybe more general merchandisers, they are playing more to the, the sort of the crowd of different categories and segments and experiences there. We really just want to be known as the, the fashion expert that creates an experience very tailored to that, that even can compete in some ways with the physical retail world as well. So they're kind of three of the big objectives that we have um, going into this year. We continue to sweat some of the smaller details as well. But, you know, really everything that we're doing is in, one of these three buckets of, of fashionability, of retail excellence, or, or ultimately doubling down on customer loyalty and, and personalization. Thanks, Leon. This is interesting. The, like these three, three points are uh, really important. And going a little bit deeper into personalization, McKinsey's research shows that 71% of cons consumers expect companies to deliver personalized experiences. And 76% of customers say that personalization is a key factor when deciding where they are going to buy and where they're going to, to, the, uh, to do their, their shopping, right? So to what extent personalization form part of your e-commerce? Uh, we already talked about the loyalty. Uh, what kind of features, what, are, what is the strategy behind personalization? 
No, no, I think honestly, 71% is perhaps low. Um, you know, the, the times when we speak to our customers, you know, everyone is asking for um, more personalization. They want to be recognized. They want to see um, products and recommendations and content and campaigns that are relevant to them uh, based on their preferences and their history, et cetera. And so we see personalization not as any one given feature, but really as the through line throughout all of our strategy, all of the initiatives that we have, and even the conversations and the cultural change that we have as a company. And so not just thinking about customers as averages, you know, there's a Laura customer, but really trying to understand what are the segments, what are the cohorts, what are the individuals within that Laura customer that, that make up the average. And so um, it really kind of goes through. And one of the big drivers for us in terms of our own focus on personalization is of course for the many customers, but also for our top tier customers, our most loyal customers at Zalora, those that have been with us for the whole sort of 11 years of our history and have made you know hundreds of purchases over that period of time. They are mm -hmm. the ones with the highest expectation around personalization. You know, they do expect that we know who they are, what they're buying, what brands they're interested in and their price points. And what we're really trying to, in our journey, I guess, um, avoid is sometimes that common e-commerce experience you see where you go and you buy a product and the next time you go to that website, you see that same product again recommended all over the, the customer funnel. And so we're really trying to understand, you know, how can we be more um, contextual? How can we, we be more complementary to the past purchases? How can we improve the discoverability and inspiration component? Uh, and of course, relevancy there. And, you know, we're talking about that today in a, in a few of these different sort of experiments and features that we have been building out. And so, yeah, it really goes across. Um, we do a lot of testing and learning on some of the more core pieces of our experience, like um, search and sorting and recommendations. You know, we're always testing different weights and variable setups there, um, as well as some of the bigger and bolder bets that we might take in, in terms of innovation. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's a common line. Um, everything that we're building out as part of that early product development process, we're asking ourselves, is this a product or a feature set for one customer, for many customers, for one specific cohort, for one country or demographic? And so we're, we're also thinking in that level. And then when we get down to it, we're asking ourselves, does this need to be a one for many type product where we're offering you in a more segmented approach or can we get to one to one? And really what we want to get to is, is that sort of Netflix of e-commerce in a way where we're saying, hey, look, you are one for one. My homepage is different to yours and is different to your friends. Um, but then it's really based on, you know, how you engage, where you engage, how do you browse and discover, you know, are you more campaign led or brand led, et cetera. So uh, we're really excited about the journey. We've been invested in it for a number of years. We still got a mountain ahead of us, um, but, you know, we're, uh, we're really happy with the momentum we're building up here. That's great. I'm, I'm happy as a user as well, by the way. That's great. That's great. So coming to some of the features that you have in your, in your plat on your platforms that are uh, actually powered by, by vSense as well. Let's go, let's talk a little bit about visual search, um, shop the outfit, complete the look. Uh, I'll, I'll go through, through, through and I'll explain the features first. And then I'd like to know a little bit about, about the story behind it. Like what are the problems that you're solving with these uh, experiments or with these features, right? So the first one will be the, the oldest feature that you have from VSense on your platform. Uh, it's called a visual search. So the feature is where the shoppers can search for a product using image. So I can go there and either uh, take a picture, take a photo with my phone and upload it, or I can take like a print screen or another photo that I had from social media, for example, and then upload it, and then Zalora will showcase all the similar styles in the catalog. So the idea is to make things uh, easily searchable and easily findable, as you, you just mentioned, right? And then if we go to the second one, uh, uh, it's this um, feature that we call, it's a recommendation that we call Shop the Outfit. So Shop the Outfit helps users to shop the other products there are already in the style PDP, photo PDP. So imagine that I'm, I'm checking this T-shirt and I was like, okay, this T-shirt is, is nice. Maybe I'm going to buy, but I see how it was styled. And I was like, hmm, 
hmm, maybe I like the tanning as well. And what about the shoes? So how I'm going to buy it? So in, the, in, a, in a normal journey, the customer will have to go back and search for the items until they find it. But in the journey that you are offering right now, I can just go uh, scroll down and I can find uh, the list of products that are already in the, um, in, the, in the PDP, which makes it much more easy for me to shop, right? Uh, and then if we go to the third one is our latest experiment, which I really love, uh, is what we call complete look. So here we offer styling ideas. So finally, what we are trying to do here is when the user go to any PDP, so imagine I'm in this PDP with the, 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 the black dress, I'm like, I don't know how to wear it. I have a party, I have like a, a night out with friends or I have a date, how I'm going to do it? What you're doing now in, uh, on your app is that I can search for, the, for this feature, I, I can see this feature on the PDP called Complete Loop, and it will show me different ways of uh, using it. So we have, for example, here we have look A, look B, and look C. So it's going to add the fashion um, journey, um, a little bit more fashion to the journey that you are offering to your customers. So I, I really love it. It's still uh, a new thing. So we are eager to see the results, but I'm sure the, the, the engagement is going to be high. So from your side, can you tell me the story? Can you tell me what are the problems that you're trying, you're trying to solve using this? No, absolutely. Um, I mean, in terms of the, our personalization story in a way and, and what, what features do we have today um, that are personalized to customers? You know, we've of course got some of the, the more traditional product recommendations, the search uh, sorting and things like this, right? So. Of course, we try to show you the most appropriate and more re most relevant products to you as a customer, as well as your search term, et cetera. And, uh, and really what we're trying to do in some of these experiments that you've just uh, called out is, is really add in and amplify that, that foundational personalization experience and add in additional recommendations that are really contextual to either the product that you're looking at, the purchase you've just made, or you as a, you as a customer. And so it really uh, adds to your discovery experience versus just purely, you know, throwing you into one product after the next, after the next. And, you know, when we speak to customers, one of the biggest things that we continue to hear from them is the need for inspiration, the need for us to help them in finding what is the right outfit. And, and sometimes that's what they love about the physical retail world, right? Is being able to go into the store, walk around in that freeway, get those recommendations. And so... This is maybe perhaps our way of trying to do this as a, as a technology company and as an e-commerce company. Um, as you rightly pointed out, I think visual search is, is perhaps the, the longest partnership that we've had with vSense in terms of the other products and, and features that we work with. We've, we've been really happy with the results. Um, you know, definitely, it's from a, from a purely a conversion perspective, we see it you know, meaningfully higher in terms of conversion than any other method of search and so there's a huge engagement there that customers have and we're constantly looking at how can we um, attract more customers to be using that feature set because clearly it, it's really useful for them um, it's a different way of browsing and doing discovery and, and actually you know as customers are going into instagram and into facebook and tiktok etc they're able to find products and outfits that maybe they like to look on somebody else and then go straight onto Zalora, upload those photos and, and find a similar outfit for them as well. And so we see a lot of power in, in that product specifically. And, um, and we're really excited to see some of the results of these other experiments that we've been rolling out over the last couple of weeks. Okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I mean, as a user, it's so overwhelming, right? You you have the money, you want to shop, you want to find something, and then you have like a PLP a list of so many things. You need inspiration, you need creation, right? So this is a powerful tool for personalization as well. For sure. So, and, and actually, sorry, just to jump in there, uh, one other thing that I think we're really um, excited about with especially Get the Look and Complete the Look is... Um, one of the observations we have is that personalization works really well when you've got a lot of data about a customer that has a long tenure with you and has made a, you know, multiple purchases over a period of time. And so it's really, it gets very simple to personalize an experience for that type of customer. Um, 
what we're really also excited about is perhaps a, a different use case for some of these experiments and features, which is to create recommendations for new customers. And so customers we don't have a lot of data around or a lot of demographic information on what are their preferences and purchase histories, et cetera. And so we can actually say, hey, look, just base this off the one purchase that you've made. Here are some recommendations, right? That could be completing the look. Or even as you're just browsing around and you haven't made your first purchase yet. And so this isn't just a feature that we see as being hugely valuable for long-term and loyal customers, but actually something that we can really drive a personalized experience from day one. And, and so that's something we're really excited about and, and seeing if we can, um, you know, seeing if we can really improve that, that uh, new customer experience. That's great, absolutely, and it it reads well with uh, our our next um, uh, slide here. That is about the list that we created with the learnings that we had with you guys and with other partners across the globe. So something that uh, we believe that are like valuable things that uh, a retailer or a brand should should look at before deciding how to go to personalization. So the first one would be start with a clear personalization strategy. As you already mentioned, personalization is not a tool, it's not a feature, it's a strategy. So it's a value for the brand. Number two is gather and analyze customer data. You just said it, right? Uh, you need to understand your customer on a deep level. Of course, we need to consider the regional regulations and have always the, the, the best and the ethical approach. Number three would be use AI and machine learning to help you to scale and personalize experiences because it's impossible to do it in like, you know, like a customization uh, uh, way, right? Um, number four will be focus on relevance and value. So prioritize, prioritize what will really bring the most value for this specific customer. Sometimes it's just doing personalization throughout the, the, the discovery or the search uh, uh, journey, but sometimes it's really just like uh, offering the right size to the right person. I just want to find my size. It, it shouldn't be that difficult and we know that it is, but it shouldn't be from, from the user perspective, right? And then last but not least, uh, test and optimize. Uh, it should be a constant iteration. As you learn how you will for more valuable and more efficient personalized experience, your customers will need, uh, your customers will change their needs, their preference, preference, and these will be like a game of how fast you can test, you can learn, and you can adjust, right? As everything in e-commerce, actually. So Leah, any any point that you want to, to add to the list or even anything that you'd like to discuss further? Nothing that I would I would add, but definitely I would double down and emphasize the, the point of test and optimize. Um, you know, we've been on this personalization journey for a number of years by now, and by no means did we get it right from day one. And so, you know, whilst we now sort of sit back after the last couple of years, of course, we've still got a, a mountain ahead of us to climb in this journey. But as we sit back and look, you know, we're really happy with the successes we've achieved there. Um, you know, we do see higher engagement. We are seeing customers um, buying more, interacting more. Um, we are seeing conversion rates and some of these other sort of e-commerce metrics around catalog, CTR, et cetera, really growing exponentially year on year. And so we're really, you know, we're happy with that. But I think we have to remind ourselves that we got there through, you know, many small iterations and experiments, as well as a number of bigger and bolder bets and innovations there. And so that's what I would definitely encourage all of us to be thinking about, you know, when we think of personalization as we're setting our OKRs, as we're doing our roadmap planning, it is literally, you know, one small weight change from point A to point nine, as well as some of the experiments we're talking about with vSense, as well as, you know, how do we build a data platform and a customer platform that really enables the, the more structured collection of data, the more, you know, the ability for us to centralize and then pass this out to the, the different providers and infrastructures that we have there. And so, you know, it, it's not just all big or all small, it's really a mix there. And, you know, we've been able to track over time and test and experiment over time. And I think that's really what's got us to where we are today. And that, you know, completely ends up being the, the most important aspect of, of how we've approached this, I think. That's amazing. Thank, thank you so much, Leon. I think we're coming to the end. So we will have time for like two or three questions. Let's see what we have here. Okay, there are a few questions on, on, your, on our box here. So let's start with the first one. 
I think this is for you, Lian. Uh, does implementation of other uh, search methods like visual or voice drive the same engagement or conversion like text search? So what's really interesting actually, and, and this is a result that in some ways surprised us is perhaps engagement is a little bit lower with some of these um, different uh, search methods like visual search, for example. Um, but actually conversion is, is really meaningfully higher, as I mentioned before. And mm -hmm. so what we're seeing is that great experience where customers can go into their social media. Um, they can see an outfit from an influencer or someone they look up to. They can capture that as a screenshot and come onto Zalora and find um, products and outfits that are, that are really quite similar. And so there's, there's definitely a lot of um, utility there for customers. They find it a feature that's really useful to them. And ultimately, from a business perspective, it is driving conversion. The, the question is, how can you make it as convenient then for the other browsers? How can you create different use cases around visual search as well? Um, you know, so it really sits at the top from a conversion perspective of all of our other search methods that are perhaps considered more traditional. Okay, got it. And, and it's actually aligned what, uh, with what we see across the globe with other customers as well. I mean, different regions would have different adoption rates, but uh, with the adoption of Google Lens and other, other features as well, we do see the increasing of engagement and of usage coming up. So yeah, yeah we are, we are uh, looking forward to see how it's going to unfold. Absolutely. Okay, we have, too. We, yeah, yeah. We have a second one here. So another question from the audience. Um, what roles does data play in the overall personalization journey and planning for Zalora? Um, it's a great question. I think when we think about data, we perhaps think about it in two or three different um, for two or three different reasons when it comes to personalization. One is collection of data, and both explicit and implicit data that we might collect about a customer, either through onboarding and, and preference type services that we've built out, um, as well as you know purchase history, browsing history, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so we're always trying to look at what is the most relevant data to collect. We don't want to collect too much data about a customer that it becomes uh, you know, an, an ethical challenge in a way. Um, but we're also asking ourselves, what is the data that we want to collect that could drive um, a more meaningful personalization decision for that customer? And so we're always looking there at how we can collect um, that. And we're especially interested in how we can collect some of this data early for new customers. And so, you know, I've referenced this a little bit before. It is far easier to personalize for those customers that you have huge data sets for, long purchase history with, you know, longer relationship tenure. Uh, new customers that come onto your platform, it's its actually really difficult to personalize. And in some ways, um, what you end up doing is offering something very generic. And you know what we do know is on day one for a customer, that's where a lot of people are making their purchase. And if you kind of screw up that first impression, uh, it really becomes difficult to bring that customer back. You will end up paying for them again through marketing, et cetera. And so we're also really excited to see what data we can collect explicitly um, and also how we can use other forms of data at, at a crowd level um, to really then drive a more personalized experience for new customers. The, the third piece is then uh, really around tracking experimentation, right? How do we make sure we have the ability to take and create a more sort of loop uh, type of product development process for ourselves here, where we're taking the experiments, the changes we're making, the different variables, the different attributes, mm -hmm tracking that over time, understanding what impact it's having for different cohorts of customers, and, and the, ultimately the experiment results that we have, how does that then feed into the next round of changes that we might want? And so when we think about data, we think about it, how do we continue to collect? How do we use that for new customers as well? And then how do we ultimately track, test, and learn um, across the board for, for personalization here? That's great. Thank you, Leon. Uh, so I think it's the last question. Um, Unfortunately, we don't we don't have so many so much time. But let's go to the last one. What are your thoughts? This is a good one on the future of other discoverability and personalization. Um, I mean, in terms of our future, I think as we work in e-commerce and technology, um, personalization is only going to become a bigger and bigger and more prominent component of all of our strategies and roadmaps. I think it's. It's already here. It's already a big part of the discussions we're having on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Um, I do believe in the foreseeable future, it will be a mix of the personalization that's maybe one from one, as well as the segmentation. Um, I think we'll really be trying to explore how can we uh, provide it personalization in more useful context. You know, I think for a long time, we've gone down that more traditional product recommendations, recently viewed email for like type format. And I think we'll, we'll go into a more, uh, more advanced um, sort of customer experience with personalization there where we're looking a bit more contextual. Um, and also, I think it will become a little bit more holistic of the broader experience. It won't be one feature or component, but it will be, how do you browse? How do you discover? Does your customer journey change? Is the way cart is displayed different because you're more price sensitive, et cetera? And so I, I see this becoming a really um, big part of everything that we do. I think rather than building new features, what we'll actually be doing is, is taking those features and personalizing them, segmenting them to different customers, turning them on and off for different cohorts, et cetera. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's absolutely here to stay. I, I wouldn't think anyone would disagree with that. Um, and in honestly, I think it will open up a huge creative opportunity for us as well to really think differently about personalization past what we've done for a number of years now. Sure. And how we do such a complex uh, strategy, right? It's such a complex uh, uh, journey, uh, simpler to our customers, right? Because at the end, there are people trying to buy things for you and, and they need and they, they want this personalization. Let's see how it is unfold. Okay, so thank you, Lian, for your time. And of course, thank you, AWS, for inviting us to share about such an exciting topic. Thanks for having me. A big thank you to Luciana and Liam for the insights they shared with us.